Hello and welcome to this special series on adaptation of literary sources into TV and films. Now let us understand the nuances of writing and converting literary elements into technicalities of TV or film script. Let us talk more about plot. In some literary circles, plot has become a dirty word, tarred with the connotation of hack commercialism. The loss is ours, for plot is an accurate term that names the internally consistent interrelated pattern of events that move through time to shape and design a story. While no fine film or uh, teleplay was ever written without flashes of fortuitous inspiration, a screenplay is not an accident. The writer redraft inspiration again and again, making it look as if an instinctive spontaneity created uh, the film, yet knowing how much effort and unnaturalness went into making it look natural and effortless. The plot means to navigate through the dangerous terrain of story and when confronted by a dozen branching possibilities to choose the correct path. Plot is the writer's choice of events and their design and time. Again what to include or to exclude, put before and after what, event choices must be made. The writer chooses either well or ill, the result is a plot. In either third person or first person, the novelist can directly invade thought and feeling to dramatize the tale entirely on the landscape of the protagonist's inner life. For the screenwriter, such stories are far the most fragile and difficult. We cannot drive a camera lens through an actor's forehead and photograph his thoughts, although there are those who would try. <laughs> Somehow we must lead the audience to interpret the inner life from outer behavior without loading the soundtrack with expositional narration or stuffing the mouths of character with self-explanatory dialogue. As John Carpenter said, movies are about making mental things physical. Although the variations of event design are innumerable, they are not without limits. Now let us talk about arc plot, mini plot and anti plot. Robert McKee, author of Substance, Structure, Style and the Principle of Screenwriting places the arc plot at the top of what he calls the story triangle. At the triangle's other two points are what he terms as the mini plot, which is minimalist plots featuring open endings internal conflicts and multiple or passive protagonists. An anti-plot that is an anti-structure plot featuring loose casualty, non-linear narration and inconsistent realities. The far corners of the art create a triangle of formal possibilities that maps the universe of stories. Within this triangle is the totality of writers, cosmologies, all their multitudinous visions of reality and how life is lived within it. To understand your place in this universe, study the coordinates of this map, compare them to your work in progress and let them guide you to that point. You share with other writers of a similar vision. At the top of the story triangle are the principles that constitute classical design. These principles are classical in truest sense, timeless and transcultural, fundamental to the earthly society and the early society, civilized and primitive, reaching back through millennia of oral storytelling into the shadows of time. When the epic Gilgamesh was carved in cuneiform on 12 clay tablets 4000 years ago, converting story to the written word for the first time, the principles of classical design were already fully and beautifully in place. Uh, here we see the qualities of arc plot namely casualty, closed endings, linear time, external conflict, single protagonist, consistent reality and actor protagonist. We will discuss more in detail about these things. Classical design means a story built around an active protagonist who struggles against primarily external forces of antagonism to pursue his or her desire through continuous time 
within a consistent and casually connected fictional reality to a closed ending of absolute irreversible change. This collection of timeless principles can be called the arc plot. In the dictionary sense, arc plot is eminent above others or the same kind. The arc plot however is not the limit of storytelling shapes. As the word suggests, minimalism means that the writer begins with the elements of classical design but then reduces them, shrinking or compressing, trimming or truncating the prominent features of the arc plot. This set of minimalist variation can be called the mini plot. Mini plot does not mean no plot, for its story must be as beautifully executed as an arc plot. Rather, minimalism strives for simplicity and economy while retaining enough of the classical that the film will still satisfy the audience, sending them out of cinema thinking, what a good story. In the right corner is the anti-plot, the cinema counterpart to the anti-novel or novio Roman and theatre of absurd. This set of anti-structure variations does not reduce the classical but reverses it, contradicting traditional forms to exploit perhaps ridicule the very idea of formal principles. The anti-plot maker is rarely interested in understanding or making an understatement or quiet austerity, rather to make clear his revolutionary ambitions, his films tend towards extravagance and self-conscious overstatement. The arc plot delivers a closed ending, all questions raised by the story are answered all emotion evoked are satisfied. The audience leaves with a rounded, closed experience, nothing in doubt, nothing unstated. Mini plot on other hand often leaves the ending somewhat open. Most of the questions raised by the telling are answered, but an unanswered question or two may trail out of the film, leaving the audience to supply it subsequent to the viewing. Most of the emotion evoked by the film will be satisfied, but an emotional residue may be left for the audience to satisfy. Although mini plot may end on a question mark of thought and feeling, open does not mean the film quits in the middle, leaving everything hanging. The question must be answerable, the emotion resolvable. All that has gone before leads to clear and limited alternatives that make a degree of closure possible. A story climax of absolute irreversible change that answers all questions raised by the telling and satisfy all audience emotions is called a closed ending. A story climax that leaves a question or two unanswered and some emotion unfulfilled is an open ending. The arc plot put emphasis on external conflict. Although characters often have strong inner conflict, the emphasis fall on their struggles with personal relationships, with social institutions or with forces in the physical world. In a mini plot, to the contrary, the protagonist may have strong external conflicts with family, society and environment, but emphasis falls on the battle within his own thoughts and feeling conscious or unconscious. Now we are talking about linear versus non-linear time. An arc plot begins at a certain point in time, moves elliptically through more or less continuous time and ends at a later date. If flashbacks are used, they are handled so that audience can place the story's event in their temporal order. An anti-plot on other hand is often disjunctive, scrambling or fragmenting time to make it difficult if not impossible to sort what happened into any linear structure. Godard the once remarked that in his aesthetic a film must have beginning, middle and end, but not necessarily in that order. A story with or without flashbacks and arranged into a temporal order of events that audience can follow is told in linear time. A story that either skips helter-skelter through time or so blurs temporal continuity that the audience cannot sort out what happens before and after what is told 
is in non-linear time. In aptly titled anti-plot uh, film Bad Timing, a psychoanalyst Art Garfunkel meets a woman uh, which is played by Therese Russell while vacationing in Austria. The first third of the film contains scenes that seems to come from the early going of the affair. But between them, flash forwards leaps to scenes from the relationship middle and late stages. The center third of the film is spattered with scenes that we assume are from the middle period, but interspersed with flashbacks to the beginning and flash forwards to the end. The last third is dominated by scenes that uh, seem to come from the couple's final days, but are spliced with flashbacks to middle and beginning. But tossing time like a salad, bad timing's anti-structure design disconnects the characters from the world around them. Now let's talk about casualty versus coincidence. The arc plot stresses how things happen in the world, how a cause create an effect and how this effect become a cause that trigger yet another effect. The anti-plot on the other hand often substitute coincidence for casualty, putting emphasis on the random collision of things in the universe that break the chain of casualty and leads to fragmentation, meaninglessness and absurdity. Casualty drives a story in which motivated action cause effects that in turn become the causes of yet other effects thereby interlinking the various level of conflicts in a chain reaction of episodes to the story climax, expressing the interconnectedness of reality. Coincidence drives a fictional world in which unmotivated actions trigger events that do not cause further effects and therefore fragment the story into divergent episodes and an open ending, expressing the disconnectedness of existence. Expressionism, Dadaism, Surrealism, Stream of Consciousness, Theatre of Absurd, the Anti-Novel and Cinematic Anti-Structure may differ in technique but share the same result. A retreat inside the artist's private world to which the audience is admitted at the artist's discretion. These are worlds in which not only are events atemporal, coincidental, fragmented and chaotic but characters do not operate with a recognizable psychology, neither sane nor insane. They are either deliberately inconsistent or overtly symbolic. All storytelling possibilities are distributed inside the story uh, design triangle, but very few films are of such purity of form that they settle at its extreme corners. Each side of the triangle is a spectrum of structural choices and writers slide their stories along these lines, blending or borrowing from each extreme. Now let's talk about drafting the short film's screenplay. It is commonly understood that the difference between a screenplay and a novel is that novels tend to explore the interior landscape of a character's thought and feeling, while screenplays tell stories about what we can see, that is a character's action. But while it is easy to see the difference between a film and a novel or a short story, it is a bit harder to see the difference between a short film and a long one. Of course, one of the more obvious differences is the length. Feature film screenplays are as a rule of about 120 pages. This is for a two hour feature film. The rule of thumb is that one page equals one minute of screen time. In short screenplay, on the other hand, uh, this can be as short as 1 minute or as long as 40. Short films also take many shapes, they can be experimental, animated, documentary or narrative. The short narrative screenplay is the sort of screenplay that we are concerned with here. Like its beefier cousin, the feature film, the short film's narrative tells a story, but beyond this the similarities fade. First the feature film has a three act structure, a structure that goes beyond beginning, middle and end. In the feature film each of the three acts hinges on a plot point. A plot point is some event that spins the action into another direction, usually heralding the next act. 
Feature films also generally have subplots or elaborate back stories. In a short film, there is no time to develop an elaborate plot structure. In fact, as we noted earlier, some short filmmakers fear time constraints, so they eschew story entirely. They make film based on situations, not story. Generally, these films are ironic. They show characters in unusual situations that are resolved through some final twist. Story is different. Stories evolve when the characters want something, they are blocked from having it and resolve the matter in some way. In a story, character does not simply find themselves in ironic situation, they grow, they change. The structure of a film is based on this growth. However, in the short film, the character's desire has to be made very clear very early in the film. The obstacles have to arise almost immediately. The road to resolution has to be well plotted and well placed. If you manage all of this, you will have produced a successful short screenplay. The process of writing a short screenplay is similar to writing a long screenplay, but presents special challenges. Beginning and ending in a feature, you have the first 10 pages or so to set up your story. That is roughly 1 by 12 of your film, but 1 twelfth of a short film is well very very short. Therefore, a good opening scene for a short film needs to convey a lot of information and to convey it right away. When thinking about where you want to begin to tell your story, think about the very last moment that you can enter the story and still have it make sense. That is uh, the moment you should begin with. Sidfield argues that to have a story beginning and to have a strong beginning, you need to know your endings. In other words, before you begin to write, you need to know what your character's problem is and how it is going to resolve itself. Uh, Sidfield also points out that the resolution of your script and the end of your script are not usually the same things. In many films, the story is resolved usually before the end of the film. And these endings give the audience some sense of what the future will be. There is almost uh, always a forward looking moment like this in film. Audience seem unsatisfied without the, uh, them. In a short narrative, not experimental film, the relationship between a film's beginning, resolution and the end must be very snug. Curiously, we have found that it is best to think about uh, this relationship as both linear and circular. On the one hand, because a short film's beginning is so close to its end, the screenwriter needs to provide a very linear sense of how the character gets from uh, point A to point B. On the other hand, it is helpful to think of your storyline as coming full circle. Whatever elements you lay out as essential in the beginning must be apparent in the resolution and the end. The last of the basic principles listed above is in some ways the most challenging and yet there are some tips for writing that will help you to write engaging scenes. Among them, avoid exposition. We said it before, but it bears saying again, there is nothing more dull, more strained than exposition. Accordingly, you should avoid it when you can. Of course, there will be times when you will need to explain things to your audience in order for your film to make sense. But you should do your best to find out other ways of conveying the information. Try to convey it visually or through action. Avoid calling the shots. Some very good writers have failed in Hollywood or in Bollywood because they have been under the mistaken impression that writing screenplay means being able to call camera shots. Nothing is further from the truth. Unless it is absolutely necessary, you do not need to say close up or uh, long shot or too short. Instead, attempt to make each chunk of screenplay represent a different shot. You do not need to write 
the types of shot like wide shot or medium shot. If you describe the action vividly, you can anticipate the kind of coverage or the shots you will need without shot calling. Avoid adverbs and adjectives. Good writing is active writing. Accordingly, the best writers avoid adjective and adverbs and rely instead on nouns and verbs. Because screenwriting is about action. An extensive verb vocabulary is essential when writing for films. So we have basically tried to understand that there are different type of plot structure and these plot structures are totally different in nature from one another. We have also tried to understand that while writing or while adapting from a short story, you can slide and take inferences from each of uh, these different type of plot structure th that is arc plot, mini plot or anti plot. And we have also tried to make you understand about the short film which is the beginning which is the first step that a student uh, will take for learning this medium of teleplay and films. And these days with the advent of digital technology, short film making has become more easy and fun. So I hope that whatever things that we have discussed here would make sense to you and would inspire you to go ahead and try uh, to, uh, you can, can also try your hand on making some adaptation of short stories or poems and try to convert it into teleplays or short films. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.